Hello, my name is Miss Laura and I am a youth librarian at the Plainfield branch of the Kent District Library and I'm with Miss Lee. Hi, I am at the Comstock Park branch and I'm also a youth librarian. Today, Miss Lee and I get to talk about nonfiction books for kids. And nonfiction basically means that it's true to life. It's not just a story. And so it can cover science and history. And we have a lot of really fun books to share with you. So we're excited. I'm going to start right in with a book that's called Whose Bones Are Those? And it's written and illustrated by Chihiro Teguchi. This is a very simple book. There are very few words on the page. In each of the pictures, you start out by saying, whose bones are these? And there's all kinds of bones smattered all over the page. It's a fun guessing game actually with kids because you have to try to figure out by looking at the bones who the bones belong to. And then you turn the page and you can figure out, ah, Ah, that was a flamingo. It's fun, it's simple, and I will warn you, some of them were a little tricky. Hmm. So, whose bones are those? The next one is also an animal book. It's called A Day in the Life of Big Cats by Tyrus D. Williams. My kids and I love this book. It begins by introducing you to the, cat, the big cat family and how they're all related. And then you walk through a day hour by da, hour, by hour um, starting with early morning in a hunt with a snow leopard. At 9 a.m. you meet two pumas that live in different parts of the United States. Um, and then at 10 o'clock you're in India with a tiger. So it's super fun. The illustrations are bright and colorful. There is a bit more text, but it's digestible. It's organized nicely. Um, and you just learn so much mm -hmm. about big cats. It's funny that you brought that book because I brought A Day in the Life of bugs. So <laughs> it's a different author. This one's written by Jessica Ware, but the illustrator is the same, Chaya Prabit Prabhat. Um, and the illustrations are just amazing. So it's kind of the same concept. It goes from 7 a.m. in the morning till 10 p.m. at night. Um, like, for example, an antlion hunts ants, and I believe that was at 9 a.m. I didn't know there was such a thing as an antlion. Oh, Did you? oh there's, I do. I <laughs> love them. They're so fun. <laughs> I had no idea. So there's all these odd, odd bugs that you don't know about. Um, and I learned other fun facts, like that honeybees actually only need five hours of sleep. Oh. I would that would be that. helpful. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that this was a really great read. It's fun for kids who love those weird but true books yes. um, with, I think, better illustrations than weird they but are. true. They're beautiful. So, so yes, Good. this one I thought was fantastic. The next one that I brought kind of fits with bugs. It's called Flowers Are Pretty Weird. And when you think about it, they really are. So this one has a bee right here. You can see them. He tells, um, he walks us through, it's not a story, but through the book um, and tells us all about flowers and how strange they are. He talks about how they get pollinated, um, how some stink, how some actually live underground. So it's, again, just a kind of fun book, but you learn a lot of weird things in it, which is fun. That is fun. Another flower plant book is just called Grow, and Grow is by Riz Reyes. This is beautiful. Each page in this book highlights a different plant family from lettuces to succulents to maple trees and gourds. The illustrations are gorgeous. I don't know if you can see on the cover, but they are just beautiful. They're detailed and you learn so much. Uh, you learn the history of different plants, um, seeds, how they're used, how to grow your own, and just so much more. Um, it does have quite a bit of text. It's almost, it would definitely be better for upper elementary. Mm. Uh, though, honestly, I could also see adults who enjoy gardening mm. loving this book too. So, it's beautiful. Another one with just jaw-dropping illustrations is called Mushroom Rain. And that is by Laura K. Zimmerman. The text in this is very small. There is not much text and it's almost a bit poetic as well. Uh, but I learned so much about mushrooms. Uh, some mushrooms smell like bubble gum. What? Uh, surprise. <laughs> also mushrooms help create rain and some mushrooms grow in the dark. 
Uh, the text is simple, but then at the end of the book, there's additional information in case you want to expand your mushroom knowledge. Mm. Bubblegum. Do you know, is bubblegum made from mushrooms? Is that why no. it smells like No, <laughs> it's not. not maybe. Don't go eating mushrooms without knowing what they are. <laughs> That's fair. Yes. <laughs> All right, I got another book for you. This one also great illustrations. Mm -hmm. um, this one is all about animal teams, so animals that live in groups and work together. Um, I love this one because it talks about why these animals live in teams, but also how that symbiotic relationship works um, and how it affects nature. Um, so this has great pictures. I think this is great for anywhere from first grade on up. Mm -hmm. um, I enjoyed reading it as an adult and I loved that. So they have these beautiful illustrations, but they also have real pictures in them. They oh, went fine. and found an actual picture of the animal. Um, so you can actually see what it looks like and compare it to what you see outside. Fun. So this was a great one for that. The next one I'm super excited about. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> My kids love sharks. Yes. And this is called Can't Get Enough Shark Stuff. Um, it's a National Geographic kids books, which they make fantastic books. So a lot of these are going to be actual images taken by National Geographic photographers. But what I love about this book is it's got that weird but true, the National Geographic vibe to it. But there's also quizzes in this book. Ooh, like, fun. what shark would be your bestie? I'm curious. <laughs> like, I know. That sounds um, fun. <laughs> they've also got, like, shocking facts, shark stories, and then a page of all things sharks, which, I mean, the book is all things sharks. But um, one of my favorite parts, though, is the dad jokes in it. They call them shark jokes. Ooh. So I've got a joke for you, Miss <laughs> okay. Laura. I'm excited. What does a hammerhead shark say when it does a good job? I have no idea. What does it say, Lee? <laughs> I nailed it. No! <laughs> I love that. That's so delightful. This is fun for all ages. <laughs> Definitely. No doubt. I have a series that I have loved. It's called History Smashers. And this specific one is History Smashers, The Underground Railroad. It was written by Kate Messner and Gwendolyn Hooks. Um, the series generally is just wonderful. But in this one, Kate and Gwendolyn explain how slavery first started in the United States and also how it influenced so much of our history. And throughout the book, there are specific um, facts that I grew up learning as truth that are smashed um, based on uh, first person uh, information. And then it also includes really amazing stories of people who are so incredibly brave and resourceful as they thought as they sought their freedom. It really is a thoughtful, eye-opening book. It has fun little graphic novel stories throughout it too. And it just was a, a good read that um, I, I would highly recommend. Since we're on the topic of history, we might as well also learn about the history of underwear with Professor Chicken. This one was written by Hannah Holt and illustrated by Corwin Briggs. And I'm gonna be honest, it makes us both giggle. <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny book. It's a funny look at the history of underwear. Professor Chicken walks his students and his readers through linen loincloths that were fit for Pharaoh, uh, underwear that you would wear on your head that was King Henry VIII's wives, uh, diapers made out of plants. Uh, the pictures are hilarious with uh, chickens as models. And I will say I learned a lot about underwear and even how underwear teaches us a lot about how people lived throughout history and around the world. So just a fun one. That one, when she showed me at first, I couldn't stop giggling. It, it's <laughs> giggle inducing. <laughs> the next one I have is pizza, a slice of history. Because who doesn't love a good piece of pizza? I loved this book. It is great for the youngest of readers all the way on up. Um, it's got great bright colored pictures and they're simple. So there's not a ton of detail um, and there's not a ton of words, which makes it good for everyone. Um, I loved how much I learned 
um, from this book about pizza, where it came from, but also I learned that the pizza margarita actually was named after the queen of oh, Italy. I didn't fun. know that. <laughs> and that's why it's got the ingredients that it does because she wanted her pizza to be the color of the Italian flag. Oh, I love that. But so, so fun. yeah, <laughs> this is a great read to learn all about our favorite dish. Excellent. The next one I have is a little different. Um, it is not true, but it is fairy tales, which we put in our nonfiction section because of cult or, um, literary awareness. Um, it's something that a lot of kids will need to um, help with context of things that they learn in school, um, things that's going on. So that's why you'll find fairy tales from all over the world in our nonfiction section. This one is super fun because it takes those classic fairy tales and it's a choose your own adventure Ooh. with multiple endings, which I think is awesome. And you can see there's kind of gold on here. It's very mm -hmm. shiny. The illustrations are amazing. Um, I really enjoyed it. And it's fun because you can read the same story four or five times and have it just be completely different. Oh, so it's got all those classic like Little Red Riding Hood, the Three Little Pigs, all of those and with different endings. And who wrote that one? Lee? This one is written by Laurel Snyder. And the illustrations are Dan, Dan Sant, which yes. is so fun too. So yes. that looks awesome. <laughs> That's great. It was a lot of fun to read. Yes, We Will is written by Kelly Yang. Uh, and she's a, another wonderful author. This one is all about Asian Americans who shaped this country. This book uh, is amazing. It talks about Asian American heroes who have made such a difference in the United States. Each page is illustrated by a different illustration, which is really cool. And it highlights one or two Asian Americans and their accomplishments. Um, there isn't much text on the page, but Yang includes just enough to pique your interest. And then she also has um, more information in the author's note at the back so that you can learn everything from the Transcontinental Railroad to Kamala Harris. So yes, we will. Wonderful book. Love it. I've got a couple more biographies. This one is called Because Claudette. I love this one. The illustrations, if you know who Floyd Cooper is, he is one of my mm -hmm. favorite children's illustrators. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us, but the illustrations in this book reminded me so much of him. Um, and this is all about Claudette Coven, and she actually sat refused to get up off of her seat on the bus hmm. before Rosa Parks. She is yeah. actually Rosa Parks inspiration. Oh, I had to read that a couple of times. I did not know that no. she, after she did that, she met Rosa Parks and that's what inspired Rosa to oh, do what wow. she did. Oh, that's incredible. Um, this, it was, there wasn't a lot of words on these pages. So it's great for young readers too, who are just starting to learn um, about our country. It is a heavy topic, but um, she does it in a really, really, or Tracy, Tracy Baptiste does it in a really good manner that is good for young kids mm -hmm. to ingest. So, Gentle. Nice. yes. The next one that I have is one of my favorite authors of all time. It's a biography on Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. and it's called Rise. From Caged Bird to Poet of the People, Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. um, this one is written in verse. It's beautiful. Ooh, I love that. I love the illustrations yes. too. The colors that they used just felt really Maya to mm -hmm. me. Like I was like, mm -hmm. yes, this, this feels like her. Oh, um, I think they did a really good job. Um, but it just walks you through her life a little bit, um, with kind of the same beat to the poetry that mm. I felt like I got when, when I read hers. So it's a little taste of that for younger readers. Um, because it is poetry and it's in verse, I would say a little bit older, maybe third grade on up. But if they're if they're willing to just look at the pictures, it's a great read for anyone. Fun. Highly that recommend. Beautiful. A little more history for you. I have two graphic novel series that I want to talk about. The first one is History Comics, and this is the National Parks. And I, first of all, love National Parks. That's one of the favorite things that my family enjoys doing. 
And this graphic novel was very eye-opening to me about the history of national parks in the United States. It was impressive how many people worked hard toward making national parks what they are today. Um, but the book also shows some of the sad parts of our history and um, how Anglo-Americans caused harm and death and really basically pushed Indigenous people off of the land and claimed it as their own. Um, this graphic novel is a very quick read. It definitely made me want to get out and visit more national parks nice. and learn more about um, the land in our country. So that was a good, a really good series um, edition. Another series, a graphic novel series that I enjoy is the Maker Comics. This one is Live Sustainably. It's by Angela Boley and Les McLean. It's just a great graphic novel series and this one also did not disappoint. Throughout the book, you learn so much about sustainability. Um, and then there are also tons of practical, easy to do activities that you can do and make today. My son and I both read this book and we just had a really good discussion afterwards. So another fun graphic novel. Wonderful. So I've got a couple of World War II books um, from different perspectives. This first one is actually first person perspective. Um, this one was just translated from Italian into oh. English. Oh, wow. So it is a new book, but it's a newer, it's a new older book. Oh, fun. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it was kind of annotated so that it's ingestible for children. Um, I loved this book um, because it's, it, it takes place in Ital Italy. Yes, it's Italian. Yes, yes. Um, so she's Italian Jewish. Leah Levi is Italian Jewish, and she is born in 1931, just um, under the beginning reign of Mussolini. Mm -hmm. um, so she has to move um, for a school to Jewish children very on in her childhood. Mm -hmm. And then as things start to escalate, her family, her dad loses his job, and they have to start moving from place to place mm -hmm. um, just for their safety. Um, finally, she ends up at a college or a Catholic school um, just for her safety. Yeah. Um, and but while she's there, she's watching from the sidelines kind of um, as these bombs are being dropped in oh, Italy, wow. um, which is very scary. What's nice about this book, though, is because it deals with the day to day and she's on kind of the sidelines, um, it, it skirts the edge of war mm -hmm. and the atrocities and makes it a good choice for describing the treatment of Jews mm -hmm. to early readers. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll kind of get that feeling, but it's not going to be descriptive and it's not going to be um, traumatic for a young reader. Mm -hmm. um, it will probably have, they'll probably have questions and, you know, but that is what this book is good to start um, asking those questions. I would say this would be like a third or fourth grade read, maybe, maybe a high second grade kid, yes. you know, but yeah. it's a great book and first person. Wonderful. So. The second one I have is a biography. Um, this one is going to be for maybe high fourth grade, definitely fifth graders. Um, if your kids have read any of Alan Gratz, this is a fantastic next read. Um, so this one is called Alias Anna, A True Story of Outwitting the Nazis. Um, so this is a Ukrainian Jewish piano um, player. She's a prodigy, but her family... Um, all of a sudden Ukraine gets invaded and her family gets taken in by the Nazis mm -hmm. and they're out on their death march to mm -hmm. the, um, the camps. But as um, one of the guards is back's turn, she takes this opportunity to dart. She runs away because her dad had looked at her and said to her, I don't care what you do just survive. So she leaves and she is, she, her name was Zana, but she changes it to Anna. So that's why it's alias Anna. Hmm. And it's a story about survival and sisters. Hmm. So it's a really great emotional book. Mm -hmm. It's a quicker read because it's also written in verse. Oh, wow. But it's going to make your kiddos think. Yes. So it's a fantastic read. If they love anything Alan Gratz has read, written, this is oh, a next wow. great step. I want to read that one. Yes. That sounds so good. Yes. yes. <laughs> so that is all we have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we will link a um, book list so that you can put all these books on hold right underneath the video. And thanks for joining us and we'll yes. see you next time. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy reading.